<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down. Now, the other night, um, you know, I, I went out to the movies, and, and when I was scrolling through all the different titles that are out there right now, trying to find something to go watch, you know, I, I figured I'd probably end up on a new release, like uh, A Dog's Way Home, um, or, or something that I've been waiting to see for a while, I haven't had a chance to go see, like, on the basis of sex. Um, but instead, when this title popped up, I freaked out. I was like, ooh, I know what I'm going to see tonight. I'm going to check this one out. And I was so, so happy when I walked out of the theater, man, because talk about two fantastic performances from one John C. Riley and one Steve Coogan. Uh, spoil up a chair, man. Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler-free on Stan and Ollie. And uh, for those unfamiliar uh, Stan and Ollie, what is that? Well, it's, of course... One of the first times ever uh, that we are getting to see the story of one of the original comedic duos, uh, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Obviously, look, for me, right, I mean, born in the 80s, and these are a couple guys that performed in the 20s and 30s and 40s, um, I kind of missed Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, but I was very familiar uh, with the follow-up duo that that kind of they sparked one one of the many duos they sparked um, in Abbott and Costello. And you know, as, as you grow up, like I said, being a comedy fan, it's impossible to not know of the names Laurel and Hardy. Um, and you know, in in college, I took a pop culture class and learned you know much more you know a little bit about them. And I've seen some clips, but I won't lie to you, I've never seen any of their full featured films. Um, so my general knowledge of Stan and I fairly kind of on the low end but certainly know who they are enough to know that when i saw the trailer for this steve coogan and john c riley around knocked this out of the park uh and these two do man they absolutely crush it in this movie um and, and it's wild like i said even with the very minimal knowledge that i have of the two um it's just so apparent that these guys nailed this start to finish man they just completely encapsulate who these guys are and, and when they're doing the routines Oh my God. I mean, I was in a theater that was uh, filled with mostly uh, older people. And the entire movie, I heard more laughter throughout the course of this film than I have a lot of comedies um, nowadays. And honestly, if you tried to do like a Stan and Laurel, uh, a Stan and Laurel or Oliver Hardy bit now, I don't know if it would really fly. So it was really nice to be in a theater with a crowd that could appreciate their comedy uh, the way that I could sit there and appreciate the comedy. And be in a place where it was easy to laugh and enjoy the performances. But on top of all that, you really get an interesting insight into the lives of Laurel and Hardy. And it's one of these things where you have two guys who performed for over 30 years together. Um, there are so many stories you could tell. It's like, which one is the right one to finally put these guys on the big screen and tell their story in a way that you can encompass that much time but only tell one story? And I have to say, Jeff Pope um, did a brilliant job with this script and a brilliant job in picking the right story to tell Um there's been a few movies I've seen lately where it's like they just want to tell all these different parts of the story. It's like, I get it, man. When you know and you have so much good, but you got to be able to hone it down and be able to encompass that kind of story. And here they do that, man, by showing their farewell, what became their farewell tour. Um, you know, you really are able to see the way they just kind of create um, the, the way Stan Laurel was just always on and always thinking and always coming up with bits. And the way him and Hardy kind of just would bounce bits off each other when they were having normal conversations or they were traveling. Really fascinating to see that stuff. And at the same time, be able to see them toward the ends of their career and, and have really honest moments that, you know, are hard to have. I and mean, they have one scene where they just kind of have a full on all out. Like, I'm throwing down the gloves, man, and this is everything I've ever thought about you. And it kind of hinges on, you know, this one instance that kind of had to do with contract negotiations. That's where this movie starts, kind of starts there and jumps 16 years into this, uh, you know, tour that they're on. And you, you get to learn the frustrations that the two had with each other and the way that they were best friends, but not always, right? Like, the, they really did a great job of picking a story that could tell the full, give you the full scope of the relationship between these two guys. Uh, totally understandable when they wouldn't get along. Um, but also completely understandable how these guys were inseparable from each other. Um, and like I said, uh, around that contract negotiation, there is a linchpin moment um, that kind of has Laurel and Hardy at a place where you see them and they're both presented with these options and different things happen. And now granted the situations and the, the circumstances are different, but 
it really allows you to kind of crack into their relationship and dive in and really get a full picture of who these two guys were and who they were to each other. Um, and it was just wonderful to watch on screen. And like I said, someone who doesn't know a lot about the two of them, I really felt like I learned a lot by telling this one story right at the end of their careers. Um, and just to see the love and the passion that these two had for each other and for comedy um, is just so great to see. Uh, John C. Riley, as I said, knocks it out of the ballpark, as does Steve Coogan. Um, but Riley really, really, really gives you a, a solid, uh, you know, Oliver Hardy, man. And you really feel the different things and how, like, over the years and all the stuff they did, you know, how that weared on him as he got, you know, to be a bigger, bigger guy. Um, you know, and he has knee problems the whole movie, yet... He always was willing to push to get the laugh. And, and the way that they brighten up, you know, like and especially him, kind of like brightens up every time the crowd is full. And early on, it's not. Um, I just loved everything that, that Riley was doing. Throwing Steve Coogan plays a very, very kind of counter. Uh, really dove in on the Laurel character, man. I was really, really fascinated to kind of learn how Stan was just, he always had to be on and all he had was Laurel and Hardy, it, or at least you know the movie makes you feel like that was the one thing that he always clung to. He just could never not be on that. They have that conversation um, that I was talking about where they kind of talk about like their friendship, and you know Oliver Hardy could go out and do things without Laurel, but Laurel had a tough time doing anything without uh, Oliver Hardy. And there's a really nice end note at the end of the movie um, that kind of shows that off in a way where you're just like, wow. That's wild. And again, uh, Coogan is just absolutely brilliant the whole movie. And these two guys carry the whole thing start to finish. And they're absolutely wonderful to watch. And like I said, their performances, man, when they do bits and skits and the dance numbers and the song routines, it is so spot on. And I like that during the credits, they kind of showed you the one dance they kind of do to end all of their shows. And we see multiple times throughout the film, the one that they recreate at the beginning it's like spot on to the real thing. It's unbelievable. I, and I thought John S. Baird did a really good job directing this one um, and, and traversing and telling this story that could have gone so many ways and so many topics you could have dived into. And with his direction and Pope's script, you're able to centralize on a focal point um, that really tells their story. Um, and then you just surround them with a great cast. Uh, Danny Houston pops in at the beginning of the movie um, playing Hal Roach, and that's kind of around those contract negotiations. Danny Houston, just always solid. Uh, Shirley Henderson, who plays uh, Lucille Hardy, Oliver Hardy's wife, um, she does a fantastic job. I loved watching her and the way she cared about Oliver um, so much. And then Nina Arianda, who plays Ida Kitaviva. K no, hold on, I'm gonna get this. Plays Ida Kitaviva Laurel, um, who uh, you know Laurel had married. And you know the other thing they kind of mentioned is the two had multiple marriages, and one of the reasons that they were still going later in life was. What else are they going to do? And two, they, they needed the money. Um, but Nina kind of stuck around toward the end with Laurel and was, um, you know, his final wife. Uh, she does a great job. And Nina and Shirley's relationship, as they kind of continually are traveling with each other, is so funny to watch. It's like uh, at one point, the one guy is like, man, you get you get two bits for the price of one because the girls are literally like watching a bit too. And they're really, really funny. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed them. And then finally, the other person that really popped for me uh, was Rufus Jones, who plays Bernard Delfont, who's kind of like their travel agent and the guy who's responsible for kind of the whole tour. He picks the places they play. And he is a total agent the whole time. Like he's never not working. And, and it makes you want to punch him because you can tell he's, you know, he's doing things to get the most for him. Um, but at, at one point in the movie, he has like this real honest, genuine moment. And it's, you just go, oh man, like even Laurel and Hardy could get the toughest nuts to crack, right? Like a guy like Bernard Delfont, he, he's just always thinking about that dollar sign. And even Laurel and Hardy finally could get to him where he's just like, they're brilliant. Um, and this movie was brilliant. I really, really did enjoy it, man. Uh, it's excellent performances. And like I said, Steve Coogan, John C. Riley, uh, I just totally become these two icons of comedy. And it was so cool as someone who didn't get to grow up or really watch too much Laurel and Hardy to get to experience a Laurel and Hardy film in a way where I kind of got what I think people must have been getting back then. And man, talk about just geniuses uh the movie's so good uh, i highly recommend it especially if you're a comedy fan but that's all i gotta say man um if i say any more i'm definitely gonna spoil this one um but really really enjoyed it man it's laugh out loud funny and it's really deep and serious and the emotional beats hit and this story is just so well told uh, that you'll really get a feel for who these two guys were so i hope that you'll go check it out but what i uh, do want to know is if you have seen it 
What'd you think, man? Hit those comments down below. Let me know if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Uh, if you thought Riley and Coogan really nailed the characters. Um, I know some of you out there are diehard Laurel and Hardy fans. have seen all their films. Being that I haven't, man, let me know if, if you've seen this or what about their films you're hoping to see if you haven't seen it, um, and what worked and what didn't work. Uh, leave it all down below in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe and little bell button so you get alerts every time I make a new video. For the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down, I'm the C-Man, and I'm signing off. Peace! Well, that's all live and breathe. You still here? Check out a video like this one, or this one, and... Hit the subscribe button so you can get alerts and check out everything the Seaman's got at the cinema sit down.